on November 20th, 1993, I was there. When you have divorced parents like I did and they lived in different towns, it's like two different worlds or two different TV shows. Sooner or later, on the rare occasion, there was bound to be a crossover. One crisp autumn morning during my junior year of high school, the athletic director of the school I went to was passing out free tickets to a San Jose State football game like candy. I would be visiting my dad for that weekend and he lived in San Jose. I wondered if I had the tickets, maybe he'd want to splurge on the gas and the concessions. We sat in the second deck of Spartan Stadium and all my friends and acquaintances were there. It was like being with them on a Friday night for a varsity football game. This was the moment where a crossover happened. It was a show where my dad was the special guest star or my friends made the guest appearance. Both teams were not that good and played in a conference that would die out at the turn of the century. The Big West Conference is still around and trots out the annual automatic underdog in the NCAA basketball tournament. In fact, Pacific would have two more seasons after this game until the university shut down the football program after the 1995 season. San Jose State left the Big West and moved into the Western Athletic Conference in 1996 and then to the Mountain West Conference in 2013 after the WAC stopped being a football conference. Aside from three bowl game wins in the 21st century and an 11-2 record in 2012 and finishing in the AP Top 25 for the first time in school history, San Jose State has never made it to mid-major status. Needless to say, this didn't have the glitz and glamour of, say, the SEC or the Big Ten. Both teams were 2-8 and eight going into this game. Nothing was riding on the game, no bowl eligibility to play for, but how it all went down, we sure got our money's worth. The starting quarterbacks went on to have long pro football careers and both were South Bay Area homegrown talent as well. Pacific quarterback Craig Willihan was from San Jose, a graduate from one of my friend's alma mater, Santa Teresa High School. He was a transfer from Oregon State University. He would be the final player in Pacific's football program to be drafted to the NFL in 1995. Willihan spent three seasons with the San Diego Chargers. In 1998, he would actually be a full-time starter over the rookie Ryan Leaf and did much better than Leaf. After his career in the NFL, Willihan played for two teams in the short-lived XFL, the Chicago Enforcers and the Memphis Maniacs. After the XFL folded, Willihan would finish his pro football career with seven seasons in the Arena Football League, two with the Orlando Predators, one with the Indiana Firebirds, two with the Las Vegas Gladiators, and his final season in 2007 with the San Jose Sabercats, where he served as a backup to Mark Grebe and was on the Arena Bowl 21 winning team. A little word association. When you hear of my hometown of Gilroy, California, many people from all over the state of California, the United States, and even the world would say garlic. Gilroy has held their annual garlic festival every July since 1979. In 2018, the festival had 1988 Olympic gold medalist Brian Boitano and Iron Chef Michael Simon as a couple of their distinguished guests. Other notable people from my hometown include Joe Trela, whom in 2000 became the youngest million dollar winner at the time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Chris Jimenez, who played 10 seasons as catcher in Major League Baseball for six teams, is also from Gilroy. As of this episode, he's currently on the coaching staff of the... Seriously? Anyway, for anyone who still cares about boxing, Robert the Ghost Guerrero, who fought Floyd Mayweather Jr. in 2013, hails from the garlic capital. I graduated high school with his older brother. And last but not least, the subject of this episode, the quarterback for San Jose State, and how I was able to score two free tickets to this game. Jeff Garcia played five seasons with the Calgary Stampeders of the Canadian Football League from 1994 to 1998 winning the Grey Cup and earning the Grey Cup MVP award in 1998. After that, he would begin a 10-season odyssey in the NFL. Starting with the San Francisco 49ers, he would take over the starting job full-time in 2000 after Steve Young retired. He led the Niners to two division titles. After a mediocre 2003 season for the team, Garcia was released. He would play for the Cleveland Browns in 2004, and in 2005, he would be reunited with his old 49ers head coach, Steve Mariucci, with the Detroit Lions. His career gained extra traction in 2006 when he stepped in for injured Eagles quarterback Donovan McNabb. The Eagles won the NFC East. Garcia would spend two seasons with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2007 and 2008 where he led the Bucks to an NFC South Division title in 2007. In 2009, Garcia was back on the Eagles, but only lasted a few weeks there. 
After a brief stint with the Omaha Nighthawks of the short-lived United Football League in 2010, Garcia's last stop in his playing career would be with the Houston Texans in 2011, but he never got to play. During this solid career in the NFL, Garcia went to the Pro Bowl four times. When I first got the tickets, I didn't know about the significance of this moment for my hometown or Gilroy High alumni. To me, it was just a night out at the stadium with my dad, and to an extent, my friends from school. As mentioned earlier, my two worlds would collide that night. This would be the last college game for Jeff Garcia. It was all quiet in the first quarter. Then in the second quarter, Pacific drew first blood when Wheelahan threw to Greg Weston for 12 yards. Pacific would capitalize on a Garcia pass that was intercepted by Darius Cunningham and was returned to the one yard line. Daryl Rogers would punch it in two plays later. San Jose State would get on the board when Garcia threw a 26 yard touchdown pass to Tom Pettit home. In the opening drive of the third quarter, San Jose State went 12 plays for 90 yards. The Spartans would tie the game when Garcia threw a 5-yard pass to Jason Lucky. Pacific had an answer back. Wheelahan would throw to Steve Mell for a 30-yard touchdown pass. In the fourth quarter, Pacific would extend their lead with a 33-yard field goal by Jason Schoten. Later that quarter, San Jose State would go for a fourth down conversion in the red zone. John Mountain would run it in for three yards. The two-point conversion was botched after a bad snap to running back Donald Lindsay. San Jose State would stop Pacific on the next drive. Now we get to the end of the game. San Jose State with the ball with five seconds left. Garcia would try a Hail Mary pass to the end zone intended for tight end Brian Roche. The long prayer for Roche would be intercepted by Dimitri Gazelas. Game over, Pacific wins. That's the end of the season. 2-9 was not only the worst record in John Ralston's four years as San Jose State coach, but it would be the worst record in his 17 seasons as a coach over a 37-year period. On top of that, 2-9 in 1993 would be the worst record for San Jose State since 1970. Almost two decades later, they would top their own futility in 2010 by going 1-12. My dad summed it up perfectly that night as he walked down the steps to ground level at Spartan Stadium. The Spartans may lose a lot, but they sure do lose with pizzazz. I went to another San Jose State game in 2005 where they spotted Nevada a 20-point lead. The Spartans would come back to tie the game in the third quarter, and then it fell apart in the fourth quarter. He could have been right all along. I was there when two of my worlds would cross over, and it didn't cost me a dime. On November 20th, 1993.